Biden goes to the beach a lot because he's got consultants that say, you look great in a bathing suit. You ever see him in the beach? He's going into the... No, you look great in a bathing suit. Some consultant is getting paid, probably give him a million bucks a year, and he says, we want to see him on the beach. First of all, I don't want to see a guy that much on the beach because it means he's not working, right? But I don't think he's particularly like... Actually, he's heavier than I thought. I thought he was razor thin. It's only his legs that are razor thin. But you know, they have a consultant. He said, this guy looks so good, he's so handsome that he's going to be on the beach as much as he can. If he would have gone to the beach, and the problem is, you know those chairs? They're like light aluminum now, right? A child can lift them. They're meant for a child to lift for your grandfather, right? A child. He can't lift a chair. Remember he used to say, I'd like to take him to the back of the bar. I said, no. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. And the press, the fake news said, oh, isn't it so cute? If I ever said that, they'd say, he's a fascist. <laughs> you know what would happen if he took me to the back of the bar? Oh, yeah. He'd be in trouble. But you know what would I go like this. Under Biden, the USA has been turned into a dumping ground of the world. What's going on, everybody? It is New Hampshire. They just called it Donald Trump won. Donald Trump won. Not by a lot. We're here with our friend, Mr. Joe Lanou. What's up, Joe? What's going on? What's going on, on bro? Look at that. Joe Lanou. Check it out in the bottom over there. <clears throat> we got six people listening already. Well, God. Are Everyone they in for a treat? What's going <laughs> on with Donald Trump? So Trump today had a pretty busy day. He's been all over New Hampshire. I've been watching him on the news this morning. He went to New Hampshire and he said a few things and Fox has been covering it. And this one lasted a lot longer, in my opinion, than Iowa did. Iowa. They well, I, I think the I, well, I think the process is faster. Iowa is a caucus, so it takes some time to get people circled in their groups and determine who the winner is versus just casting the votes and counting them up at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I think about about the same. <laughs> no, yeah, unfortunately, we, like we were talking about in uh, uh, prior to coming on, is uh, it just hasn't hasn't been a nail biter this far. No. I mean, I think a lot of the people who are voting for Nikki Haley right now, it says Trump is 54.8% and Nikki Haley is 44.5%. But I think a lot of the people who are voting for Nikki Haley are Democrats or undecided, which is Democrats voting for Nikki Haley just because they have a strong dispassion for Trump. They're never Trumpers. Um, so they're out there just trying to vote so he can't even be a choice, which he is going to be a choice and he's going to be you know, on the ticket, in my opinion, I don't think they're going to be able to settle these lawsuits and all these things, you know, fast enough. I, I don't see anything on the horizon that's going to stop him from uh, legally not being able to run. Uh, he could run, run out of support. And lots of other reasons why a man can't be president, but I, I don't see any of that. And I don't know where you'd get the idea that Democrats would go out and vote for his, oppo his opponent just so that he's not on the ticket. Do you think Democrats are that concerned about being on the ticket? Well, that's what Trump is saying. He's saying a lot of people who are voting for Nikki Haley, they're actually Democrats voting for Nikki Haley, that when the general election comes, they're not going to vote for Nikki Haley. They're actually going to vote for whoever the Democratic nominee is. They're just showing up to the Republican primary to vote for someone besides Trump. Uh, I, think you, I think you missed my sarcasm. Oh. Uh, the Democratic Party is doing everything they can to keep his name off the ticket. In November, Heck, yeah. From everything from the Justice Department, state courts, that looks like there could be some collusion between the Georgia prosecutor and and the Biden administration. And if all that comes to fruition, that's just. Uh, man, it's kind of things that the, four, the founding fathers warned us of is what it is. It's it's the government to, instead of it having a. Um, um, uh, servant master role where the people being the master and the government being the servant it's flipped the government's the master and we're the servant and that's scary heck yeah super scary 
All right. So what do we got today? Uh, the Trump is about to come on. I can cut to that one in just a second. Let me take this off. Um, Trump is about to kick on. And let's see a little nice. On a jail like I'm on. A, a large group of ballots came in. I think it was to Fulton County. And they just happened to be 100% Biden, even though Trump won the military by a lot, you know, a tremendous amount. But these ballots were 100% for Biden. And you know about that? A very substantial number came in, all for Biden. No, it couldn't be me. Not me. Couldn't be me. Not me. Couldn't be me. Not me. You know, that stuff right there, what he was asking, did you hear those tapes from Folsom, from Georgia, Fulton County? Uh, I'm not sure what tapes you're talking about. The tapes were, I just played it. Donald Trump was talking and they recorded an hour long of him talking. And that's the reason why he got trumped up in those charges. Now I haven't listened to the whole thing. I, I don't know that, uh, you're talking about the state charges in Georgia, right? Yeah. The, it's based on the phone recording. I just played it. There's a little snippet of it, but he's like, Hey, I mean, just the preference that I have the whole entire thing. It's on kingdom radio, YouTube page, but it wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, I don't understand, but it's like, you're such a bad person because of that tape. He was saying, well, what about this situation? And they're like, no, I don't think so. And he said, okay, well, what about that situation? Uh, well, don't you think it's weird because the military loves Trump. I mean, everyone loves Trump, but the military definitely loves Trump. How are they going to get 300,000 votes? And every single one was for Biden. Not one was for Trump. How, how do you explain well, that? And they said, well, this and this. And then he just went on to the next thing and the next thing. It didn't sound like that bad. Here's the, here's the problem is that he, he, they act like Trump's the first politician to think that he, he won an election that uh, wasn't uh, was cheated out of an election. They thought they should have won. Hillary thought she should have won. Uh, uh, Al Gore thought he should have won, had the Supreme Court decided. But Trump is the only one that they singled out, and, and they're, they're, they're just flipping the, the game on it with him and i just don't see any any of it holding up on appeal even if they find a sympathetic court to, to initially file the charges in which the state you know or if whoever's bringing those charges they have that ability to do so as long as they can find standing in jurisdiction they can file wherever they they have that so they can find sympathetic courts in new york washington dc and evidently in fulton county georgia uh, up to a point it looks like but each one of those are going to shoot down you you can't nobody's going to be able to say that Trump didn't believe he won that election. He doesn't have to be right. He has right to believe it. Uh, I don't believe he acted outside of his, his purview or authority on, uh, to ex at least to a criminal extent on anything that he did. Even if you want to say worst case scenario, it was in, it was, uh, it was poor taste. And, and I think some of the things that Trump said, especially during that time, was, was some sour grapes. And I think some of it was in poor taste or not statesmanlike. But that's not a crime. Uh, and that's not for our government to decide that someone has, is worthy of service. It's for us to decide who's worthy of service. So I don't see anything that keeps him off the ballot. And that stuff that's going on in Georgia, I think it's coming unwound pretty quick. Uh, pretty quick. That's just about done. Yeah. Uh, I know. I was seeing like fact, what, was the, what was the deal with uh, the 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 lady? She was in some kind of relationship. What was the deal with that? Hey, yo, what about, the fuck? I was like, man, what? You talking about the prosecutor? Yes. Yeah. Well, the prosecutor and the special prosecutor that she uh, she hired. Well, she hired three. In all fairness, she hired three, but uh, she's evidently having an affair with this uh, uh, gentleman Wade. Uh, and he's going through a divorce. And I saw her uh, uh, divorce attorney, a, a little snippet video today, her standing in court, pointing her finger down at the lectern and pounding it, saying that uh, uh, she wants the, the his financial records. The court should provide um, her client the financial records, she said, because that's my client's money. And he we want to know how he's been spending it. They've already got those expenditures out, and his, this is coming from his ex-wife that uh, where he's bought um, uh, flight and airfare and uh, cruise tickets out of Miami. So they had to fly to Miami, get on a cruise ship, go to Aruba, it looked like, uh, and then another trip to Napa Valley through San Francisco uh, all while he was having an affair. Uh, either way. It's, it's going to boil down to that it's just unclean hands. The state can't have even the the perception of impropriety when you're prosecuting it's not just donald trump it should have that for every one of us that stand in front of this judicial system 
but uh, it's all going to yeah. come unwound. It's just it's just done, I think. Hell yeah. Now, check Which this out. Which goes back to New Hampshire, though. I guess that's good reason for Democrats should get out there and try to find another way to knock him off the ticket. Maybe Nikki Haley's the chance if you can get enough of you to vote, but that's done, too. We'll see what happens in South Carolina. She's not going to do it. She hasn't done anything. She already lost in New Hampshire. She's going to lose in Nevada. That's 100% Trump. Trump's going to go to South Carolina. That's when she's going to make her last-ditch effort. Joe Biden thinks that's where he came on strong four years ago, and that's where he can resurface once again, and I think that's ill-advised. But let's listen to another person who thinks he could beat Trump. For run for office? Hell no. Hell no. You know why? No, no, no. You're Come making on. a lot of money. That's right. Right doing there. Doing your thing. Stop, stop right there. If, if it that's wasn't, it. listen, I'm, I'm not going to give up. <laughs> listen, I'm on Howard Stern show, man. Let me be very, right. very candid. I'm not giving up my quality of life to earn $400,000 a year and be stressed every exactly. day. Exactly. It ain't happening. Okay, so that, that's that, right. It, it's that simple to me. Can I confess to you, though? I, I will. I will. People don't call me crazy. Obviously, I have my show first take on ESPN every weekday morning, right? Yes. It's a debate show. I would love to be in a presidential debate. I nothing. I think you do me. great. Oh my! No, no, I'd eat him alive. Yeah, yeah but I, you I, wouldn't I, do I, it. I, I, you I, I, wouldn't I, do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't run for the presidency, but I would debate Trump any day of the week, any day of the week. Name the time and place, and I'd show up. Uh, I'm gonna have to call BS on that one, man. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, shit. Not good. Not good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there is no uh, way that Stephen A. could debate Trump on politics. I mean, Stephen A. could probably cut him off and stuff like he does in the show and just, you know, you know, say a bunch of things that kind of stir you up and grab your attention really quick and make your cheeks red because you can't really respond to him based on the questions he's baiting you into. But Trump is masterful at that kind of stuff a lot better than i think the people that Stephen a has experienced dealing with in the sports world talking about sports on espn i think trump would eat, eat him alive but it'd be interesting to hear that debate well it would they would run it like they're running them now where it's not really a debate there's no decorum there it's not one side puts uh issues the uh, uh, response and there's a rebuttal to that response back and forth where you can understand what both are saying it winds up where it's a damn shouting match you're talking over each other raising their hand like they're in eighth grade you know ooh, ooh, ooh let me let, let me I, well i want to respond to what he said five minutes ago mm -hmm. and that's i don't i'm not enjoying the the, the debates and i don't think that they're, they're getting any substance uh substance out to voters to make any real decision other than how they feel about somebody or they got a they got a buzz line in True that. Well, we're still waiting on Trump to take the stage, give his little victory speech. But, you know, here's Trump right now talking about how speedy trials work in China. And China has very low crime because they have speedy trials. But America doesn't have speedy trials unless it's Trump. Check this out. I went to China and I saw President Xi. I said, do you have a problem with drugs? No, 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 we do not. Oh, uh, why? Quick trial, quick trial. I knew what quick trial meant, right? Quick trial. Unlike our trials that last, you know, 400 years, except if I'm being tried. If I'm being tried, they go quickly. They set records. Uh, if I'm being tried for bullshit, they go fast. <laughs> Mine. I'm setting records. They've never seen in Washington, D.C. They've never seen speed like that. Other guys, they'd be in court for seven years. Mine gets done like two months. It's nobody's ever said what a what a two tiered system of justice we have in this country. It's horrible. It's horrible. He's not wrong. <laughs> no, he's, he's not wrong. He ain't wrong Typically, when that. it comes to when it comes to the speedy trial, though, it, it's a little. Most of the delay you see in prosecutions um, is on the defense side. They they hold it back. There's there's a, especially if it's a uh, like a homicide or a murder. There's some truth to putting some distance between the witness and the witness stand, uh, the crime and the witness stand as you can. Things you might forget, but they are, now they're pushing it. And I think there's no doubt looking at the calendar uh, that the impropriety, the the perception is there. Whether it's actually true or not, the perception is surely there that uh, this schedule was scheduled around to get him at a have him at a disadvantage during running for this election. So the number one. When they're polling everyone in Iowa and New Hampshire, and I think for the rest of the country, the number one 
thing that people are worried about, the number one concern in this election, everyone's saying is the border, the security of the border. We're talking about Iowa and we're talking about New Hampshire, that they're not exactly right next to the border. If you know geography of the United States, they're not even close to the border. But that's the number one concern in in, uh, Iowa and New Hampshire is the border. For someone like Texas, we're in Texas. How much amplified is the concern of the border here in Texas? And what do you think is going on in the border? Well, New Hampshire actually shares an international border with Canada and that they're having some of the same issues there. Just oh. uh, asylum seekers coming through. Not at the numbers. I think we're hitting it at their southern border for sure. But uh, it's definitely enough for people in New Hampshire to notice. But uh, I think overall, I think everybody in America is starting to pay attention when New York starts crying and Chicago starts crying because there's you know too many migrants there. And, and there's been no shortage of of. Uh, video, especially as of late, I think it's getting spread out more. It's been there kind of all along, but uh, man, we, you've got you've got thousands of people running across the border coming through concertina wire and and, and, and we're doing what with them? Um, I think most Americans are concerned with that. I, and I think most Americans are probably pro-immigration. I'm pro-immigration. I have nothing against it, but I, I want you to come and be an American. I don't want you to come be a Venezuelan. I don't need a, 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 a section of little Venezuela, you know, down the street or some city. Come come be an American and, and let's share your, your Venezuelan culture. I've got no issues with that. Yeah. But what's happening now, it's not happening. They're coming in. They're not getting they're not getting green cards. They can't work. They're giving them a court dates that are six years out, as, as I've heard some reported. Um, and the, in the interim, the way the law works is that if they're on a, they're asylum seekers, no. Uh, the law on is that they're supposed to have a, a speedy trial on that as well. It's supposed to be a determination whether you're you have a, a credible uh, uh, asylum uh, case. Mm-hmm. Most of, and I want to say it's probably eight percent. I think it's it's under ten percent uh, of the cases that once they go through the adjudication, were truly uh, an asylum case, as the law reads. Uh, leaving because your country's poor, you're looking for a better place for your children or an education for your children is not an asylum seeker. Those people should be deported uh, and and they should fill out the paperwork from their home country like we ask anybody else that's going to migrate into the United States. But that's not happening. The Biden administration is not following uh, the federal law. Uh, they're assuming that anybody who says they're an asylum seeker is is any any claim to asylum is 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 legitimate or as um, credible. That's why the word I was looking for. Uh, the, the law said it has to be a credible uh, um, asylum plea. In other words, believable that you're persecuting religious person. You're, fl- you're fleeing religious persecution, political persecution, things that you know they're going to jail you or kill you for. Um, not for you breaking the law. And if you were a convicted murderer <clears throat> and you had a death penalty and you escaped that, you can't come to the United States to live it out. That's not an asylum. They're killing you because of their justice system. But uh, none of that's what's holding up. People are coming here for, for a better opportunity, which I'm cool with. But but let's do it right. And let's don't rush our wire. We've got migrants sleeping on the sidewalks, man. I mean, we have our, we have an, our own homeless problem. We're adding to it. But uh, and I think that's Texas's position. And I think that's where you're going with this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was really trying to do a segue into the border and the border crisis and what's going on today with Greg Abbott and uh you know, the Supreme Court did have a ruling saying something about the razor wire that they wanted the Border Patrol to have access to deal with people who already made it to the American side. And everyone thinks that the Supreme Court ruled on removing the razor wire. But I think that's not exactly the case, but it's it's a heading in that direction. But Greg Abbott is kind of bucking the system like, no, we're going to hold the line. I know that they said that, but this is not over. We're still fighting this and we're going to add more razor wire I mean, that's the news today. What do you know about that? Uh, yeah, you said the Supreme Court just ruled on on a uh, an, in, an injunction, a stay uh, that had been put in place, saying that the government, the wires there, don't touch it until this case is, has a disposition has been decided. Um, and that was issued by a lower court. The Supreme Court overruled that. They overturned that stay, saying that uh, the, if the government wanted to go in and remove that wire for emergency purposes, they they could they could do so that the state of Texas couldn't prevent them or the justice systems or the judicial system is not going to stop them from doing it. But that case is still working its way up in, 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 in the federal court system. Uh, 
whether Texas has the right to defend that border. Now, that's an invasion case. If we go, you go to the Constitution. I had it marked. Yeah, do you have something to share? Well, if I knew what we were talking about, I'd had it ready to go. But just give me just a minute and I'll bring it right up. All right. I'll tell you what, while we're doing that one, let's take a look at these Trump signs that we made right here. Give me one. <laughs> How are you feeling about Trump? Well, first of all, it's President Trump. Yes. And I don't care what anybody thinks about it because he was duly elected by yeah. the Electoral okay. College. How do you feel about President well, Trump? You know, it's just the way it is. You respect yeah. the presidency, whether you yeah. like the man in the job or lady in the job, and it's about time uh, or not. But Justice will be done. The Biden crime family will be looked at. We have to get there first. We have to win the election. They're trying to step in my way at every path because the one person they don't want to run is Donald Trump. I went to the inauguration of Donald Trump, which is one of the hardest am, days of my life, to be honest. I am consumed with that. But that from school, everywhere, big business. You want to be successful? You want to be like Trump? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. So that's, great how <laughs> that's a great people in both sides. So let's see. Excuse me. Excuse me. Fake news. Fake news. I don't have They're trying to give me the But the people representing you are communists and criminals. They've been starting World War Three. We shipping missiles still. They don't want America great. They want it miserable. You can try to burn down the city. Scream at the top of your lungs till you're dizzy. You can cancel everything and everybody in it. But it's not your America. You can burn the flag and aggressive. You can wear a mask and pretend. I got my first amendment, don't forget I got the second It's not your I know Chris Tucker, he's a great comedian, great guy, I like him <laughs> I'm, It's true, I do like him, I met him Wait, I didn't say much, but I said hello <laughs> I think pretty soon this is going to be down to a two-horse race between Trump and myself, and I think this was a big step in, re in helping us get there. This is disgraceful. Our country is over 200 years old. We have never once indicted a former president or a candidate and a leading candidate for president, and this is Joe Biden, and this is the Democrats weaponizing the justice system because they're afraid of the voters. This is disgraceful, it is wrong, and it is a, an abuse of power by angry Democrats who have decided the rule of law doesn't matter to them anymore. I am running for president of the United States. We're skating on thin ice and we cannot set a precedent where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents. It is wrong. Donald Trump is what Americans aspire to be. Rich, powerful, do what you want to do, say what you want to say, be how you want to be. That's kind of been like the, the, the American dream. So he looks like a boss to everybody. And the Biden crime family will pay a price like other people are being forced to pay. And that price will be very, very substantial. It'll be fair. But you know what? If they're guilty, they're going to be guilty. What they are doing to justice in this country has never even been thought of before. You've got to give them kudos. The guy's in it to win it. He's not a political animal and really doesn't care what you think about how he does stuff. He has no filter, it seems. And maybe as certainly a large segment of the population has been waiting for somebody who just says whatever he wants to say, good, bad or otherwise. Burn down the city, scream at the top of your lungs till you're dizzy. You can cancel everything and everybody in it, but it's not your America. You can burn the flag and aggressive. You can wear a mask and pretend you're progressive. I got my First Amendment, don't forget I got the second. It's not your America. You told us we're the ones to blame. You're the ones who riot till the city's up in flames. You told us we've been spreading lies, but you believe the truth is on the news every night. You told us we gotta stop the fighting, but you're the ones who keep the country angry and divided. You told us we're crazier than you. But all of our conspiracy theories are coming true You can try to burn down the city Scream at the top of your lungs till you're dizzy You can cancel everything and everybody in it But it's not your America You can burn the flag and aggressive You can wear a mask and pretend you're progressive I got my first amendment, don't forget I got the second It's not your America 
Well, there you go. Ever run for office? Hell no. Hell no. You know why? No, no, no. You're why? making a lot of money. That's right. Right doing there. Doing your thing. That's, stop, stop right there. If, if it That's wasn't, it. listen, I'm, I'm not going to give up. <laughs> listen, I'm on Howard Stern Show, man. Let me be very, right. very candid. I'm not giving up my quality of life to earn $400,000 a year and be stressed every exactly. day. Exactly. It ain't happening. Okay, so that, That's that, right. It, it's that simple to me. Can I confess to you, though? I, I will. I will. People going to call me crazy. Obviously, I have my show first take on ESPN every weekday morning, right? Yes. It's a debate show. I would love to be in a presidential debate. I nothing. I think you do me. great. Oh my! No, no, I'd eat them alive. Yeah, I, but you I, wouldn't I, do I, it. I, I, you I mean, wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't run for the presidency, but I debate Trump any day of the week, any day of the week. Name the time and place, and I'd show up. Yeah, sounds good. <clears throat> We done lost Joe Lanou somehow along the way. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he won't. But let's take a look. There's old Joe Lanou talking about the old Trump. Who? All right, Joe, what we got, buddy? God, man, I don't know. I got to get back on track here. I, I don't know. We're talking, you're we're pulling up about. something for the news? You're pulling up something for the border? <sighs> yeah. Right, dude, I forgot what it was. No problem. Yeah, we're talking about Greg Abbott, Supreme Court, uh, talking about what happened today at the border. I had an interesting one. I think I have a video of, of something that was from the border. Now, I'm trying to find something, too. It was just right in front of my face, and then um, it's not there. I mean, what, we, what we were talking about was the, the case. What happened with the Supreme Court, going back to the border issue? Um, seems like it was reported that the, the, the Supreme Court decided the case. The case that is uh, going up through the course that in, involves that is uh, um, uh, an Article 4, uh, Section 4 case where the Constitution says that the United States shall guarantee every state in the Union a republic form of government, a Republican form of government, and shall protect each of them against invasion, semicolon, and on the application application of the legislator or the executive when the legislator cannot be convened against domestic violence. So Texas is saying that this is a uh, protection under the Constitution for each state and that the federal government is not upholding this, that, that we're experiencing something along the lines of an invasion. Can't really say domestic violence. But in some cases, you could make that case maybe. But that's what Texas's stance is. That has not been decided by the Supreme Court, and that's going to be the real interesting one. I don't know that I can think of or I haven't found any case law where this has been challenged prior to before with the Supreme Court. So this will be a, a true virgin decision by the Supreme Court with no real starry decisis uh, decisions or um, uh, previous decisions to, to piggyback off of. So that's why I think that's so interesting is how that goes. But that case is still in play. Supreme Court hasn't heard it yet, but there was a stay or an injunction that was associated with this case that was granted to the state of Texas that the federal government could not remove the wire until this case was settled. That's the piece that the, the Supreme Court threw out. And that's probably because there was some um, reports that the immigrants drowned coming across and that the Border Patrol who hang on air quotes could have saved them were denied access to the river uh it turns out later none of that was correct but you start adding that color in there to it i can see where the supreme court would take the stay away just to make sure nobody dies until this is figured out or at least completely understand die. but that's what uh if you can, can you see my screen let me get one second in here um here it is right there oh i just added it and it went away let me do it again 
Okay. There you go. Okay. But that's from Congress.gov, Section 4, where it says, says the United States shall guarantee every state in the Union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on the application of the legislator or the executive when legislator cannot be convened against domestic violence. Uh, another interesting part of this Article 4, uh, Section 1, talks about something that you and I have talked about offline, that what if uh, the Supreme Court says, hey, you got to take that down and just let the immigrants come across and Texas uh, sees it otherwise and becomes contrary to the federal government. How could that play out? <clears throat> but it goes back to full faith and credit shall be given to each state and to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every, every other state. And the Congress may, may, by general law, prescribe in manner in which acts, records, and proceedings shall be proved and effective thereof. Basically saying the rule of law, you have to respect, one state has to respect the, the state, the, the courts of another state, judgments of another state. Uh, and also the same thing with the with the um, Supreme Court. But so this is anyway. what everyone wants to know. Everyone's th you know, I've heard a couple of people say civil war and then people will say I, that's reckless for you for you to even use those words. It's not even close to that. It's never going to come to that. And for someone who's an elected official or someone in a big status to use those kind of words is reckless. But what is the chances that? The federal government says, no, this is what's going to happen. And Texas says, no, I'm not going to let that happen. And they get this stalemate. What's the chances of that happening? Something's got to happen. Let's let's okay, let's let's run the scenario of this. The Supreme okay. Court comes down and says that the, the federal government has supreme jurisdiction over immigration and border enforcement. OK, states cannot do anything with that. Uh, I don't believe that's the decision that would come back. But let's say that is. Um. And, and Texas says, no, that's not it. The governor stands firm and the people stand firm with them and they all lock arm and arms down and we will pass uh, Texas and, and don't allow the Border Patrol to have access to the um, to the border. At some point, it's going to come to one side's going to give up and it's not going to be the federal government. It cannot at that point. Constitution says that, and that people talk about or hang on, let me do my Bill Clinton. We're a nation of laws. And I understand what that really means. We are a nation of laws. There's nothing enforcing your right to free speech. There's no, there's nothing that enforces your right to bear arms, or your right to have your Fourth Amendment rights. And there's nothing that really enforces it unless we enforce it because we obey the piece of paper, the laws that are written on paper. When we no longer do that, when we break the system, it's like, well, I agree with the Supreme Court until the Supreme Court tells me something I didn't like, then I don't agree with the Supreme Court. Then we're no longer a nation of laws. We're a nation of, uh, of emotions in which way the wind's blowing. Honestly, at that point, we're a true democracy. Democracy may be one way today and another way tomorrow. It just depends on who's got 51% of the vote. You know, 51% of the people tell 49% of the people what to do. But that's not the way our Constitution works, not the way our government works. So could it come to a civil war? It would have to be one side, to, the government to be the aggressor and, and, and the Texas to stand their ground. Uh, I will say... Texas has got a history of it. We've so if you have a federal that government that's coming before. into Texas and saying the federal government's like, I'm going in there. And then you have the Texas National Guard that is also sworn to oath military people versus military people. I mean, that seems far fetched. I mean, is that even a possibility or what, what scenario would have to happen where that would actually be like brothers fighting against brothers, like civil war cousins fighting against cousins. Man, and this is all completely hypothetical. hypothetical. Mm -hmm. The problem I would have is even if with National Guard, you raise your hand and you've heard me say this before, when you serve this country, whether uh, in any public capacity, whether it be law enforcement, uh, public office or um, 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 soldier, you raise your right hand, you swear your allegiance to the basically the Constitution, not basically you, you swear to to offend, uh, defend the Constitution against enemies, foreign and domestic. So I would have a problem no matter what side you're on with that, that if the Supreme Court says this is the law of the land, there is no other recourse beyond the Supreme Court. That is the end say all of, of it all. Uh, goes back to why Supreme Court justice is so important. I want them to follow the letter of the Constitution. I don't want them to go dreaming up shit because there is no there is no redress. There's, if you don't like it, there's nothing you can do about it. That's what right. it is. 
but we can all agree that it's been written down there for 200 some odd years. We should have gotten used to it by now. At least it's an ending point. But those all the soldiers and commanders on both sides have, have raised their hand and sworn their oath to the, defend the Constitution. Um, and honestly, Texas would be on the wrong side of it. So I doubt you would see National Guardsmen. I, I mean, I would imagine commanders would then pull them out just on whatever order you give me. Governor is an unlawful order. And we talked about this when they talked about SEAL Team 6 going out. Your president ordered SEAL Team 6 to kill his, his opponent. Uh, SEAL Team 6 would go to prison. SEAL Team 6 cannot follow an unlawful order. And that would damn sure be an unlawful order, just like it would be an unlawful order for the National Guard to stand up. Uh, or to follow an order for them to stand up against the United States government when the United States government is enforcing a, a, a Supreme Court judgment. But now so the people of Texas don't write, uh, don't write them out. They some, there's some crazy, crazy folks down in Texas and they, they don't, they don't have as, as much allegiance to the, the federal government as they do the state. Yeah. So let's say, let's say just hypothetically, you're a, I don't know, a soldier or something, and you've gotten orders that you're going to go down to that Texas border and there's going to be some Americans there. There's going to be some Texans there. But I don't care what they say, what they do. I don't care what force is necessary. You're going to move them out of the way. And you're going to you know, do whatever that we say to do with that barbed wire, razor wire. We're going to do this or that. But if they give you some flack, if you have to go all the way to you know, banishing a firearm and shooting them, there's no way, right? You can't shoot another American that, that's a Texas National Guard. If they say, this is the way I feel and this is the way I feel, how could a soldier kill another, like a like shoot? Or, how could that even be possible? I don't see it. If you okay. had those orders, you would say, hell no. If I had the orders to enforce a Supreme Court ruling, I would be defending the Constitution. I would have to do it. Now, there's a lot of ways to you're not going down there. It's like, well, the only way to do it is we got to kill everybody. That's just not the way op any, op you know, there's hardly any military operations that go off that way. It's, it's to go to point A to point B and defend yourself while on, in, in route, so to speak. So let's say the federal government, the order is to go from Austin to Eagle Pass to this park and then occupy this park. They're going to do that. The level of force depends on the level, level of resistance they get, but that's their mission is to go and occupy that ground. Um, I don't see the National Guard on the other side standing up. I think the National Guard on the other side up, other side, and don't don't and don't uh, underestimate our our military commanders. Our military commanders understand the Constitution, understand it well. They live it. They're a piece of it, uh, and they did the the oath that, that you take. You, you take that pretty serious. So yeah, I would imagine that the federal government would follow through th with it if you had that. But go back to the Supreme Court. Remember. Okay. Hasn't been decided like this before. They're going to be the first to do it, and they're not in a good position. They're going to have to either step on states' rights somehow or another, or they're going to have to reduce federal rights somehow or another, or some compromise in between. If Texas' uh, uh, attorneys are artful enough to be able to articulate that there is an invasion across there, then it can go the other way as well where the Supreme Court's going to order the federal government to, to enforce its own laws and to stop the number of people coming across because of, we, we consider this an invasion. And at that point, it's not just Border Patrol. It's the it's the U.S. military could be called out in that case. So this could go into a couple of different ways. And I think the biggest battle, the biggest war you're going to see is going to be in a courtroom. It's not going to be with uh, an American uh, holding arms against another American. At the end of the day, we've all got to believe in. We talk about we're a nation of laws. At the end of the day, we've all got to believe in that Constitution. Quite honestly, whether you agree with it, agree with the decision or not. Yeah, it's it's just hard. Uh, it's just it's very far fetched. I know it's a hypothetical. I just don't see that happening. I mean, I think if you know, I don't know if you have to do it. And Greg Abbott says, under no circumstances, we're going to buck. And then the Texas says, I'm with Abbott. And then at some point, there's a general or someone that says, you know, we're not going to go over there and fight our brothers. That's not going to happen. So we have to either peacefully try to do something or come to some kind of terms, but we're not going to actually go to physical altercation and forcefully remove another American soldier and whatever aspect they are. They're not going to remove them from the border. It's just no way. I mean, someone has to give the command to say, step aside, step aside. They're right. But if they said, uh, I'm where is this is not over. We're not stepping aside. I mean, what would happen in that case? I mean, hypothetically, I just don't ever see it happening. But if you defend it, the Constitution, that's that's what you raise your hand for. That's and, and I don't I don't use that very lightly. That's a that's a very serious, um, um, very important 
way that all everybody in our military, people talk about Trump. Well, Trump's in charge of the military. He can't give them an unlawful order. Do you give them an unlawful order? It's like, hey, secure the White House because I'm going to stay here beyond this election here because F it, I won. No general is going to do that. It would be it's not a lawful order. You can't if if my commanding officer, I'm a I'm a PV1 private. My commanding officer comes to me and says, hey, I need you to pick up your rifle and go shoot that civilian in the head to stand over there selling fruit. Yeah, no, I don't have to follow that order. I'm not going to follow that order. In fact, if I do follow that order, I'm out there on my own because it was an unlawful order. It's like the order was never given. It's just like I walked out there and shot the guy. You're on your own. You've got no backup. So go back to the Constitution again. If the Supreme Court orders the federal government to seize and take control of that that border down there, that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen just as much as the commander in chief orders us to 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 strike a, a Houthi rocket site. It's going to happen. Looks like old Trumpy Trump looks like he's about to walk out. Yeah. Let's see if we can jump in the picture here yeah, like this. But I don't believe, like I say, I, I think that's a bunch of hoopla about that. I don't think it's going to go that route. I think the Supreme Court's probably going to weigh in somewhere, splitting the baby between Texas because Texas has got a pretty strong argument, especially when New York's crying about we got an emergency up here. Heck yeah! All Let's that look. all that crime would be evidence for the Supreme Court to weigh. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, uh, you want to listen to what Trump has to say here? Sure. Well, we'll see when he comes up. Oh, Trump, Donald Trump just won New Hampshire, and then after New Hampshire, they're going to Nevada, right? And he said he has that one hundred percent locked up. No one's even but, going to Nevada, right? Well, Nikki Haley's not on the ticket there. He's the only one on the ticket. So he's the he's next, 100%. The next contest, contest he has. The, yeah, next contest he has with the challenger is going to be in South Carolina. Um, but I don't know. I don't think you're not going to be the nominee, but coming in second every place. Just saying that that's not going to get you there. Got it. And you can, you, did you see that military veteran that was in the coffee shop talking to Nikki Haley and saying like, you know, that veterans are really needing this and needing that. And he was going down through a few things. And then he said, for the 20 and $30 million you spent on TV ads and campaign ads, you could have took that money and helped out some veterans, but instead you're wasting it on a race that you know that you can't win. You're just throwing that money away when you could actually take it and do some good with it and help out the veterans here. See, this, this veteran was telling her in the coffee shop. I was like, damn. I mean, everyone's just like two piece yeah. her up on the news. I mean, I get, I kind of get what he's saying, but at the same time, and vet, veterans aren't, we're not a, we're not a victim class. I take some exception with that. You take nobody take their personal money and give it to me. Now yeah, or, VA or, could or step build up a hospital a with it or something. Yeah. Which that's what they're talking up. about doing in New Hampshire. They said New Hampshire is the only state in the United States that doesn't have a VA hospital. And that was one of the campaign promises by Donald Trump in New Hampshire that he was going to make sure that they build a VA hospital in New Hampshire. Man, is there enough people to have a VA hospital there? You just had 70,000 people decide this election. Well, let's look here. Let's tune in here and see what Trump has to say. It ain't for 10 counties. It's like the size, less the size of North Texas. But I don't care. They didn't have a hospital. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now. Three. Three. We win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. We've won it. And it's a very, very special place to me. It's very important. If you remember in 2016, we came here and we needed that win. And we won by 21 points. And it was great. And uh, today, I have to tell you, it was very interesting because I said, wow, what a great victory. But then somebody ran up to the stage all dressed up nicely when it was at seven, but now I just walked up and it's at 14. But, but she ran up when it was seven. And, you know, we have to do what's good for our party. And she was up and I said, wow, she's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win. She lost. And, you know, <laughs> last, last week we had a little bit of a problem. And if you remember, Ron was very upset because she ran up and she pretended she won Iowa. And I looked around, I said, didn't she come in third? Yeah, she came in third. And then I looked at the polls. She was talking about 
most winability, who's going to win? And I had one put up. I don't know if you see it, but I have one put up. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. And she doesn't win those. This is not your typical victory speech, but let's not have somebody take a victory when she had a very bad night. She had a very bad night. And you, uh, you have the... You have the very, the now very unpopular governor of Bird this brain. state. This guy, he's got to be on something. I've never seen yeah. anybody with energy. It's like uh, hopscotch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching this guy. And two weeks ago, he said, we're going to win. We're going to win in the last side. We're going to win. About three days ago, he started saying, well, we want to do well. That's a big difference. But I walked out just now. We're 14 points up. And I don't know what it's going to be. But when she was up here, it was like six or seven. And, you know, with like 7% of the vote counted. Now, uh, let, let me just tell you, we, uh, we had an unbelievable week last week in Iowa. We set a record. It was the best in the history of the caucus, in the history. And uh, I remember I sort of had the same feeling. I'm up and I'm watching. And I said, she's taking a victory lap. And we, we beat her so badly. She was... But Ron beat her also. You know, Ron came in second and he left. She came in third and she's still hanging around. The other thing, she only got 25 percent of the Republican votes. I don't know if you saw that. Tremendous numbers of independents came out because in this she's state, staying at race as long as she's got government money. That doesn't and frankly she, I think know she's got enough doing. money or in pledges state, for enough money. Yeah, in so the she gets pretty South much. Carolina. Pretty much. I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to add a, uh, <clears throat> let me get a more clear version of this. Is it this one? Yeah. Excuse me. 2020. Let me get something a lot more clear right there. My boy. Yeah, it looks better. And we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. But as they said, we lost by a whisker, just by a whisker. No, no, no. But we can't let that happen. You know, you have to have people. I'm curious to see what Vivek's going to do. I can go up and I can say. I, like to I hope that he's the yeah. vice attorney yeah. general. He's wonderful. Uh, or attorney general. Can go up and say, yeah. who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before? And like claimed a victory. She did very poorly, actually. She had to win. The governor said, she's going to win. She's going to win. She's going to win. Then she she failed badly. Now, I have here, if he promises to do, to do it in a minute or less, but the only person more angry than, let's say me, but I don't get too angry. I get even. The only person... <laughs> The only part, because he was there and he did fantastically well, by the way, and then he endorsed me. And we don't have to talk about Tim Scott, who, by the way, just got engaged. We have to tell you. And that's more important than all of this stuff. But a man that got to know her very well is Vivek. I said, Vivek. I said, Vivek, go up and say a few words about it. He has to do it in one minute or less. And then we're going to just say, we had one hell of a night tonight. And one other thing before Vivek comes. Do you see that, Paul? We're going to put it up. We have beaten Biden. You could almost say, who can't? Who the hell can't? The man can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs off a stage. Who can't? But... Vivek, one minute or less. Go do it, Vivek. What we saw tonight is America first defeating America last. That's what we saw tonight. If you want America last, you can go to Joe Biden. You got another candidate still apparently in the Republican primary. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to run a campaign against Trump and Vivek. Go to Nikki Haley. Yeah. 
But you know who delivered a double-digit victory tonight? It is a a double-digit victory as of right now. Is this man Donald J. Trump, the leader of America first? And that means something. Now... USA and Donald Trump, America first. Now I got I got 30 seconds left. I want to make this point here, okay? We gotta say this. We gotta say <laughs> 30 this seconds right. left. What we see right now with her continuing in this race is the ugly underbelly of American politics, where the mega donors are trying to do one thing when we the people say another. And it's up to us to we the people to at long last say hell no. We the people create a government that is accountable to us. And we the people have said tonight we want again, as we did in Iowa. Donald J. Trump. And so you want to actually speak truth. That's the truth tonight. And the only thing they're rooting for is an ugly thing that we don't want to see happen. That's what these people are rooting for is playing to say long enough. So the Reed Hoffman's and the ugly Democratic George Soros juniors who are funding the lawsuits against Trump can prop up their puppet. We say no to that vision. I say the general election begins tonight, and this man will win it in a landslide. God bless you, Donald J. Trump. Vote Trump USA. Wow. I mean, he always has some insightful things to say. He's such a wordsmith, man. Now he's he's a he's a great so, communicator. He, he this was a puts great evening, well. and I want to thank everybody in the Basis audience, and I want to thank the people that are standing behind me. You know, uh, I think we called it right. Immigration's a big deal, a big deal, a very big deal. We have millions and millions of people flowing into our country illegally. We have no idea who the hell they are. They come from prisons, and they come from mental institutions. And it's going to it's just killing our country. And I'm talking about millions and millions and millions. They are drug dealers. They're everybody. And they come in just like walking right through. There's nobody to check and there's nobody to vet. And we have a man with us tonight, Tom Homan, who is central casting. He's central. cast. And I'd like you to say a few words about the border and Who's going to solve that problem and how quick are we going to do it, Tom? Go ahead, please. Well, Tom apparently is going to be talking about the border and how to solve it. This will be interesting to hear what yeah, he has let's, to say. Let's hear, let's hear this. For. I don't disagree it's with something him to the secure time. the border. But no one did more than President Trump. The most secure border in my lifetime. <laughs> the most secure border we've ever seen. And Donald Trump's going to do it again. We're going to lock the border down and we're going to protect Americans. Because what's happening at the border right now, record number of Americans have died from fentanyl poisoning. Record number of migrants have died. A record number of women and children have been sex trafficked. A record number of known suspected terrorists across the border. There's one man who's proven he can secure the border and he's standing to my left, Donald J. Trump. He's going to do it again. Thank you very much, John. So... This is an evening uh, that uh, I will not forget because it's the third time. But more importantly, uh, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be the most important time. Uh, We won uh, both. uh, I think they said somebody said you rarely if you win both. They've never had a loser. Let me put it that way. When you win Iowa and you win New Hampshire, they've never had a loss. There's never been. So we're not going to be the first, I can tell you. And I just I just do want to reiterate the polls. We're way up on everybody. We're way up on Biden. And over the last couple of months, if you check and you have to remember in 2016, they were saying, oh, what does he know about elections? He's not going to win. He can't win. He can't. Oh, we won. And we got millions and you can check this. And I hope the cameras don't turn off because they hate this. But we got millions and millions of more votes the second time. Right, Mr. Congressman? Millions and millions of more votes. And uh, but we had COVID and they used COVID to cheat and they did a lot of other things, too. We're not going to let that happen. And that's still and that's still going along. We don't forget. You can never forget history because if you forget, you never you never recover from it. And you repeat, you repeat. And we're not going to repeat. We're going to have the greatest election success. We're going to turn our country around. And if you take a look throughout the history of our country, if you took the 10 worst 
presidents in the you history. You put them all together, and this, none, they're still not worth great country Joe right now. It's a country in decline. It's a troubled country. It's a failing country, frankly. But if you took the 10 worst presidents and put them together, the 10 worst, absolutely 10 worst. I used to say five. Remember, I said I'd say five. Then I said, wait a minute, like we can add another five. They would not have done the damage that crooked Joe Biden has done to our wonderful country. They would not have done the damage. There's never been anything like it. And you say, are they stupid people? I don't think so, because nobody can cheat that well if they're stupid. Do they hate our country? They must hate our country because there's no other reason that they can be doing the things they do. Take a look. The taxes, they want to raise your taxes times four. They want to let the Trump tax cuts, the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country, they want them to expire. Your taxes are going to go through the roof. You take a look at regulations. They're throwing regulations. You can't breathe. You can't even breathe with what they're doing. You take a look at our border. So bad. There's never been a border like this in the world. Four years ago, we had the safest, best border in the United States. I built hundreds of miles of border wall. And they would say, oh, he didn't build hundreds of miles because if there's a board laying on the ground, they say that's a renovation. They call it a renovation. If there's two nails laying from 50 years ago, they say, oh, that was a renovation. These are very dishonest people and you're always fighting them. And just a little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. She's not gonna win. <laughs> but if she did, she would be under investigation by those people in 15 minutes. And I could tell you five reasons why already. Not big reasons, a little stuff that she doesn't want to talk about, but she will be under investigation within minutes. And so would Ron have been, but he decided to get out. He decided to get out. Now, Vivek, I don't think would be at all because he's perfect, right? And Tim wow. Scott, I know would never, that's no chance. Hey, Tim, do you want to say something? Come on, come on. I want him to say something. What? New Hampshire. Now, Tim Scott, you know, whenever he's talking, uh, usually, he's, I don't know, it's, it's the way he talks, he's like a World War Wrestling Federation or something, but he doesn't seem like as good of a, not even half the speaker that Vivek is. Yeah, I think he's a pretty good communicator. He does have a tendency to go Southern Baptist preacher. But yeah, definitely. I, I like I like Tim Scott quite a bit, actually. I think he's got uh, a man with integrity, uh, and I think he truly Trump. believes Let's what he's doing. I like any congressman and, and senators that acknowledge the fact they have constituents that aren't all over the United States, man, the particular is. area that they serve. But just remember, I, I did hear Nikki say, and now it's off to South Carolina. Well, I love South Carolina. I, I, I love it. But, you know, she forgot one thing. She forgot one thing. Next week, it's Nevada. Next week, it's Nevada. It's not South Carolina. We love South Carolina, but next week, it's Nevada. And I'm pleased to announce we just won Nevada. We just won 100%. Because all of them, they looked at it, and they took polls, and I was polling at 95% to 4 or 5%. And they decided not to play in Nevada. So we just won Nevada. We have a man from uh, Nevada here, Steve Wynn, wherever he may be. And John Paulson, the great John Paulson, made plenty of money in Nevada. Doesn't live there, but he makes a hell of a lot of money. He makes money everywhere he goes, actually. So money machine. Maybe we'll put you, you know what? Put him at Treasury. You want to make a little money? Let's put you. Anyways, good. Good to have you guys. Address. I need to make a little uh, But we go yeah. to Nevada, and that's been won. So we pick up all of those delegates. And then we do go to South Carolina, where we've done really well, where I've done well. We have a great governor and lieutenant governor and great everything, because almost every one of them have endorsed me. Two great senators, which is hard. I mean, did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and... Think of it, appointed, and you're the senator of his state, and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh oh. I just love you. No, that's that's why he's a great politician. That's why he's a great politician. 
So this is a great evening. And it is, you know, we are going to Nevada for a little while. We're not going to have to do too much. We have a great team there. But it's a team that uh, we can now send someplace else. They did a fantastic job. But uh, we and it's a fantastic place, really a fantastic place. But we'll be leaving there very quickly. We'll head out to South Carolina, where I think we're going to win easily. I think we're 50 points up, 5-0. 5-0, 50 points up on a person that was governor. That tells you something. But I felt I should do this because I find in life you can't let people get away with bullshit, okay? You can't. You just can't do that. And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. And she did the same thing last week, but he was much more angry about it than I was. I said, get up there and you let him know. We are going to win this. We have no choice. If we don't win, I think our country is finished. I do. I believe our country is finished. We have an opportunity to do something so amazing. And the good news and the reason we have such support, the best numbers I've ever had, the reason we have support is because they are so bad at what they're doing and so evil and they're destroying our country. So I want to thank... <laughs> I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank this group of people. We will never forget you. We will never forget. And I made a pledge. I'm going to have to make my exit uh, stage left. I made a pledge to your state. President Donald Trump. You have the highest energy costs in the country. Enjoyed it. In the first year, they're going to be reduced by 50% because we are going to drill baby drill drill baby drill inflation's going to come way down but in the first year your energy costs are going down by 50 percent thank you very much we love you thank you very much we'll see you soon we'll see you on the trail and thank you everybody thank you very much we will see you on the trail thanks There you have it, Donald Trump. Well, there you have it from old Donald Trump. And that's all we have for tonight's show. But make sure that you tune in because we are going to have a hell of a show on Friday. On Friday, my name is Ron. I'm with Kingdom Radio. We're also with Kingdom Christmas Lights. We're going to have a bad to the bone show in the Christmas business. So definitely check us out. And here's a little bumper of how the show is going to start. Pulling on, tripping on, fo fo. Oh, oh, oh.